Hi there. I had the great misfortune of reading a meandering, wordy, and self-important essay by a hyperbolic, almost hysterical writer named Emily Holloman, who navel-gazes about the selfishness of having a baby, quote, in the end times. Oh, Jesus Christmas, lady, get a hold of yourself. Have all of your older relatives died? Well, you can sit and get talked at by some of mine who will tell you about having five people living in a one-bedroom farmhouse in Romania with no running water. And when the commies took it, they went and fled to America for what had to be a better life. This lady drove on and on about how having a kid adds 58.6 tons of carbon a year to the atmosphere. Ah, and even though the birth rate is plummeting in this country... Truly selfish people have convinced the fence-sitting future procreators that squeezing out spawn is immoral. You know who makes those arguments? Selfish people, whose every interaction in a relationship has to be about them, like this fraud. There's scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult, and it does lead, I think, young people to have a legitimate question. You know, should... Is it okay to still have children? Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, no, it is not okay for you to have children because you are insufferable and a convenient moralist who feels the need to preach to people about subjects on which you are wholly uninformed. As far as resources and filth, there is a measure of stuff called the Simon Abundance Index that basically disproves Malthusian pearl clutching. It measures how many people there are in relation to how much they can and do produce. And even with more souls and tiny mouths on the planet, our abundance doubles every 14 years. Having more people, it turns out, leads to more ideas and inventions. And the metric shows we have reached a state of superabundance. All you have to do to reinforce this idea is spend an hour at Walmart. There's lots of stuff in the world. We're not running out anytime soon. Among this superabundance also exists a state of hyper-selfishness where everything has to revolve around everyone all the time. That's why we have TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram and Uber ratings. We have to constantly measure how truly special we are. But hysterically, children are the one thing that tend to wring the selfishness right out of you. An immature future parent might think, how cute would it be to have a mini-me? An actual parent thinks, holy crap, I'm so exhausted and now my heart is living outside of my body and I'll never sleep again. And I'm pretty sure no matter what I do, I'm going to screw this up. Parenting is everything. Literally every emotion rolled into one. It is unfathomable love. It is paralyzing fear. It is pure joy. It is heartache. And it is just about every other thing but selfish. And it is the absolute best. So if you choose to do it, fantastic. But Emily, put a cork in it and go enjoy your son. And that's the memo. Bing. Well, the world is full of scary and sharp things from oil spills and wildfires to riots and Hillary Clinton. But that's another memo for another day. Is it scary enough to purposely end the human race? No, that's idiotic. But the party panel is back. John Gabriel, Chris Hahn, and Hannah Cox. They all have a different perspective on this, which I absolutely love. Uh, so, John Gabriel, sometimes people like this who write things and just blah, 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 no one should have kids. I think they had miserable childhoods and uh, they need to sit down with a professional and work through those things instead of projecting them onto everyone else who wants to have babies. Yeah, um, Emily here is like so many writers that you read with these viral articles that must be read and must be discussed. They're just, they think this is free therapy session for themselves. That's all they care about yeah. is they want to get their feelings because they're too cheap to go to another therapist down the street and get some actual help. Um, having a child is the most selfless thing you can do. Um, and if she just thinks that it's totally selfish for me to hold on to my kids, I have two teenage daughters and I'll drop them off at her place next weekend. That would be, <laughs> that would be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> but these people are have mental issues going on. And I speak as someone, yeah, I could probably use therapy too, but I'm not going to work out my problems and all my drama on the pages of this nation's magazines because uh, readers don't need that. Yeah. And it was a, it was a long piece. It was a slog to get through that, Chris. But, you know, there's, there is a, a biological phenomenon that occurs 
in uh, many animals and beings on this planet where uh, they actually reproduce. How odd. So I've known you a long, I've known you a long time. I've been on the show a lot. I've listened to a lot of those memos. This is the first time I applauded. I thought it was like <laughs> great. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of why we're here, right? We're here to reproduce. I have two daughters, one in her teens and one in her early twenties. And yeah, my heart is out of my chest all the time, uh, caring about them. It is not a selfish thing. It's probably, the, you know, it, it, it's why we're here. It's why we exist to make the world a better place. And we have to stop thinking that the world is coming to an end. We are actually in one of the better times in this world. And I think I'm we spend so too much time on social media and other things. Yeah. Because it, it really is. And we also have the capacity to learn from our mistakes and innovate and solve problems and make things better. And having more people doesn't stop that process. Now, Hannah, you have a totally different perspective that I totally respect. Uh, if you could share your story and, and your desire in this arena. Yeah, so I get caught in the crosshairs of this debate a lot because I am a woman of childbearing age, but I don't want kids. And I've always known I didn't want kids since I was like seven, eight years old. And people would say, you're going to change your mind. You're going to change your mind. And I have never changed my mind. I simply don't want kids. It's not because I think the world is ending. I think we are increasingly seeing greater and greater abundance and human flourishing thanks to capitalism. But I just simply don't want to have kids. It's not something that I desire. And I think that people who are going to have kids should be all in. You want to be good parents. It is a lot of work. It does take a lot of investment. So I think it's problematic when I see people in my camp call other people selfish for choosing to have kids. I think it's a wonderful thing. I grew up with a family of four siblings. I had wonderful parents. I had a great childhood. I think it's a lovely thing to give that to your kids. I also think it's a great thing for women to say, you know what? This isn't the right pathway for me. This isn't what I want to achieve. I have other goals. I have other ways I want to help improve society and go pursue those things. If we believe in individual liberty, we have to stop getting in the way of people making the choices that best suit them. And ultimately, I just think it's kind of creepy to really care whether people have kids or not. Like, it doesn't impact me whether you have that a child or not. That is such a so good point. Do what you want. Let me do what I want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it is such an incredibly personal thing. And I'm so glad you shared that uh, because people are such busybodies that they feel it's incumbent upon them to explain to you how you should live. And that is the essence of liberty, mm -hmm. is that we get to choose, each and every one of us, our own individual course. So uh, thank you all so much. It's been great talking to you. What a nice discussion. John, Chris, and Hannah, welcome to the show. Woo!